proceedings to get underway any minute now. As I say, there are two uh, results to be announced today. The first result is that of the on the ballot on the draft manifesto for Labour's is it, can uh, I election campaign. Is, is that likely to be controversial in any way? Sorry? Is the uh, vote on the manifesto likely to be in any way controversial? Charlotte David Connock is there. David, where are we at right at the moment? We're, we're just about to wait for the arrival of the two candidates. They're just about to come in. David Hanson, the MP for Dellin, is talking to the delegates at the moment. Let's hear what he has to say. As the Welsh Whip, this is an unusual opportunity for me because I get the chance to speak, which is not normally the case as the Whip in the House of Commons. But uh, today we have an important decision to take. We have uh, the chance to begin again the campaign for the Welsh Assembly for Labour, and we have. I hope at the end of today, the strong chance of a unity campaign for Labour to take forward to the May the 7th election. The election on May the 7th will be the general election in Wales. Six, on May the 6th, sorry. May the 6th. I'm from the north, we have it, uh, the clocks have gone back and obviously it's on, uh, it's on May the 6th on May the 6th. Well, the, we, we will work very hard, and don't worry, Delian will return a Labour candidate on May the 6th. But on that day, we have the opportunity to build a strong Labour campaign, and we have the ability to build a Labour victory for Wales. Uh, this has been uh, uh, an interesting time for the Labour Party here in Wales. Uh, I know that uh, all of us have had our different views. All of us have campaigned for our different candidates. But I hope that from today, we will have a united campaign to help protect the Labour Party, to help build the Labour Party, and to ensure that we win the election on May the 6th for Labour. It's a, it's a particular pleasure for me today to be a Member of Parliament from the North to introduce uh, this meeting here in the South. And I look around the room today and I can see candidates, Members of Parliament and party members from throughout Wales who will be campaigning hard for the Labour message in the coming weeks and months ahead. We have a strong message to take to the people of Wales. We have a strong record in national government already, with the minimum wage coming in in April, with education funding, with extra expenditure on health, with extra expenditure on public transport. We have a strong case to take to Wales, and we must not forget that when the election takes place on May the 6th, it will be because the Labour Party with our colleagues, have delivered devolution to people in Wales through the referendum and through the campaign to take that referendum forward to the National Assembly for Wales on May the 6th. I believe, as we will see when Peter Hayne addresses us later as the General Election Campaign Coordinator for Wales, that we have a strong campaign to take forward on these issues. Can I ask you now, please, to uh, put your hands together and to welcome the Secretary of State for Wales, the Right Honourable Alan Michael MP, and the Member of Parliament for Cardiff West, Rodri Morgan MP, with Anita Gale. one of those moments that I was glad they were coming through the door. <laughs> uh, can I first of all uh, welcome Alan and Rodri uh, today and I uh, appreciate the opportunity for us all to be here to hear the result together. Can I first of all call upon the Chief Scrutineer, Catherine Ann Slade, who is a member of Cardiff Central Constituency Labour Party, to first of all announce the result of the ballot on the policy statement that was presented to members of the Welsh Labour Party, New Opportunities for Wales. Thank you, David. Catherine Ann Slade, Chief Scrutineer, to announce the National Assembly for Wales ballot for the manifesto results. And firstly, can I express the party in Wales's thanks to Anne Hock and her staff at Unity Balloting Services for conducting this and the leadership election ballot for us. The results of the ballot as, were as follows. The question asked was, are you in favour of the proposals 
in the Welsh Manifesto. Yes, 91.71%. No, 8.29%. The Manifesto proposals were therefore overwhelmingly carried and supported by the members. Can I now uh, ask uh, Catherine Ann to announce the result of the ballot for the leader of the Labour group and for the Labour nominee for the first secretary for the National Assembly for Wales? Thank you, David. Can I again thank Anne Hock and also those members of the party who acted as scrutineers this morning um, and members of staff from the Wales Labour Party who assisted us, particularly David Costa, the North Wales organiser. The results of the Wales Labour Party leadership election are as follows. The overall percentage of the votes cast in the elections was as follows. Alan Michael, 52.68%. Rodri Morgan, 47.32%. The Electoral College sections voted as follows. Trade unions and other affiliated organisations. Alan Michael, 63.96%. Rodri Morgan, 36.04%. Members of Parliament, members of the European Parliament and National Assembly for Wales candidates. Alan Michael, 58.43%. Rodri Morgan, 41%. 0.57%. Wales Labour Party members, Alan Michael, 35.65%. Rodri Morgan, 64.35%. I'll repeat the overall result. Alan Michael, 52.68%. Rodri Morgan, 47.32%. And I therefore declare that Alan Michael was elected. Thank you. Can I um, be the first to congratulate uh, Alan Michael, the Secretary of State for Wales, on the successful election to first Secretary nominee for the Labour Party? Can I also uh, express my thanks to everybody for the count? And can I uh, please invite uh, my colleague, Member of Parliament, Rodri Morgan, Member of Parliament for Cardiff West, to address the, the meeting today? Thank you. Thank you very much for that uh, wonderful reception. Uh, there are so many TV cameras and uh, press photographers and journalists here today. I think you can say that this is the day that uh, big time politics has come to Wales. It's a foretaste, if you like, of what is going to happen on May the 6th and May the 7th when the count takes place for the assembly itself. Uh, there are so many people that I have to thank. Um, I'm not sure which is the best way to do it, really, because I'm bound to forget somebody. But uh, first, let me thank Catherine Ann Slade and her team of scrutineers for the very efficient way in which they've carried out their job. And I want to thank as well Anita Gale and the staff of the Labour Party in Wales for the way they have carried out their job during the 17 weeks of this election campaign between Alan and myself. Uh, and all of that taking place under the added pressure that there were candidates being selected for seats and the lists as well. 
obviously would like to thank my uh, campaign team as well, especially Julie, my wife, Kevin, my campaign manager, and the many, many other people that were involved in all parts of Wales in what was uh, a wonderful... Ah, here we go again. Here we go again. Right. I better await instructions now. That was not a one-legged duck crying for mercy. <laughs> Can I resume thanking the, uh, uh, the facilities uh, in this hotel as well? Uh, we, we did notice that they put me in the Snowden room and they put Alan in the Cader Idris room. They were giving me the higher mountain to climb yet again this morning. But, but there we are. I want to thank the hotel for making the arrangements this morning. But above all, it is a five-star hotel. But even then, it is barely big enough to hold all the five-star people that I've had helping me during my campaign, and I want to thank them all. If I try naming names, uh, then I know I'll forget them, and that would be invidious. So I just want to thank them all, without exception, for the wonderful job that they've done. I also, obviously, want to thank the 74% of the Unison members who voted for me in their OMOV ballot, the 75% of the MSF members, the 78% of the TSSA members, 88% of the FBU members uh, as well, because, uh, and all the NUM members who took part in pithead ballots, uh, the USDOR members, uh, you know, the support that I had in that trade union section compared to the support I did not have in the last contest involving Ron and me uh, has been very, very heartening. And... In the other trade unions as well, and amongst the ordinary membership of the Labour Party, I want to thank them as well for the support that I have had. It has kept me going during a very long period, a double election campaign, which actually started in late July last year and had just a, in effect, I think it was a six-week break between the end of the contest uh, against Ron and the contest um, uh, involving uh, Alan and myself. And I want to thank the members. Uh, I've got to say, obviously, that... I want to thank Alan for the very fair, decent and civilised way in which he has conducted himself during this contest. I think he knows how important this contest was. It is a mega job, the biggest job ever in Wales. I mean, even going back to the days of the chairman of Glamorgan County Council, I think this is the most important job in Wales. I think in the old days, when they used to open a school in Glamorgan, they used to say, I now open this school in the name of the father, the son, and the chairman of Glamorgan County Council. You know? But this is an even bigger job than that. And that's why there were such important issues at stake. And we're coming very close now to D-Day, Devolution Day. It's only 75 days away. Uh, um, I've, uh, having thanked, I think, most of the people here, I just want to say I am getting used to doing these runner-up speeches. I can almost get a degree in runner uppery from the Electoral College of Life, as you might say. Uh, but, uh, you know, I have to accept that in spite of all the votes that I got in the trade union section, in spite of the wonderful support that I've had amongst the ordinary membership of the Labour Party, that I have not won this contest. And Alan Michael has won the contest. And it's once again, it is Fangavachiade e Alan Michael am Ennis. Uh, I, uh, I want to say, though, that um, I don't feel like a loser today. I feel runner-up, yes, loser, never. This campaign was not about a bid for the leadership. It was about a set of principles, and uh, they were set out in November, and I adhere to them strongly today. I gave a personal guarantee to fight for an assembly that would be free of sleaze, free of patronage, free of machine politics. That's been one of my crusades throughout my political life, and I don't uh, retract, detract from that at all today. Um, I don't think uh, that, uh, you know, in any way I'm going to backtrack from that, whatever happens from now on. And I said that my leadership would be based on breaking down the barriers between them and us, between uh, the important people as they see it and the ordinary people. And I want it to be clear that it is going to be Canisiad Awerin and not Canisiad Akrachach. It is not going to belong to the establishment. It is going to belong to the ordinary people of Wales when it arrives. <laughs> I also said that May the 7th, 1999, would be the day on which Wales stops being administered as a government department and starts being run as a country. And I think that's the most important thing. If we can 
get rid of the quangos if we can break down the vested interests and the narrow sectionalism which sometimes affects us in Wales, I think the Welsh Assembly will come to life and the Welsh Civil Service will be able to help the 60 Assembly members to produce tailor-made Welsh solutions to Welsh problems. There will also be other enormously important ways in which politics will never be the same after May the 7th, not only because we've got an Assembly but also because we've got proportional representation, people will have two votes and not one. And perhaps most important of all, that for the first time in any advanced Western democracy, or indeed perhaps any country in the world, the majority group that will be running that assembly will be 50% men and 50% women. And just think what an enormous change that is going to be. Wales will shoot up from being bottom of the league to top of the league in women's representation. From above Scandinavian countries, those countries like Finland and Sweden, where they reach 45%, but they've never reached 50%, and we will have done it on May the 7th. And I think that's great credit to everybody in the Labour Party who has adhered with that policy through thick and thin to make sure that we do reach the top of the league when we are starting with a clean sheet. We intend to start as we go on with politics where men and women will have an equal place in our new democracy. Now, I'm Lan Tiagat Zatkanoli, I'm Lan E. Vidigoliath, Ear Blyde Lawyer, Ab Achweshed of Ismai, I'm Lan Gadagali Michael Velarwini. Jachmar, a Congress Adam. Thank you, Rodri, and thank you for the constructive remarks that you've made following today's result. Can I now, colleagues, uh, on behalf of uh, my friends and colleagues in the Welsh Labour Party, invite the Secretary of State for Wales, and now today the newly elected leader of the Labour Group on the National Assembly for Wales, and Labour's nominee for First Secretary, the Right Honourable Alan Michael MP, to address the meeting. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. Can I start with a few words of thanks, and not least to Rodri for his generous response uh, today. Uh, it was very important indeed, from the beginning to the end, uh, that the winners at this race should not be Rodri or myself, but should be the Wales Labour Party and the people of Wales. Gai dechra gan dioch pawb sy wedi cymryd rhan yn yr ymgyrch ac yn arbennig fy cefnogwyr o pob rhanbath o Cymru. Wedi rhyngrych dyma'r amser i unedu yma yn y plaid lafur yng Nghymru i rhoi yr arweiniaeth gora i Cymru. Dim ond y plaid lafur y gwir plaid Cymru fedru rhoi'r arweiniaeth yna. I suppose uh, that I should start by thanks to my supporters, to everybody who participated throughout the Labour Party and the trade unions in Wales, uh, and also to the press and media who've helped to make it an interesting few weeks. <laughs> can I thank Anita and the staff of the Wales Labour Party for all the arrangements? Uh, and can I thank the public in Wales who continue to support the Labour Party at the level of support that we received at the last general election and who, if opinion polls are to be believed, will support us even more now the leadership contest is over? Uh, I have to say that uh, I felt a bit like a one-legged duck at the start of this race and I'll let you into one of the secrets of natural science, which is that one-legged ducks take longer to get there, but they still go in a straight line. Uh, can I, though, pay tribute to Rodri as a worthy contender? It's easy to tell candidates in an election campaign not to take things personally, but it does feel personal when you're under attack. While our opponents and some of the press and media have denigrated us and thrown mud at us, look at the reality. We've appeared together at hustings in every part of Wales. We've appeared together on radio, on television, time and time again. We've fielded questions and attacks by each offering 
our own style of leadership. We've kept criticism of each other to a minimum. In fact, Jeremy Paxman can have a go at each of us separately, but he couldn't cope with us together. Uh, when he came down to Wales, and bringing him down to Wales was an achievement, uh, we insisted on agreeing with each other in the best interests of the Labour Party. And as one broadcaster said to the two of us, you two are a journalist nightmare, you won't fight each other. Well, for the Labour Party, that's not a nightmare, it's a dream. Uh, it's known as dignity, for we started and finished together as loyal members of the Labour family. The election has been about the Labour Party family making a positive choice of leader, not about voting against another individual. We've competed for the privilege of leading the Labour Party in Wales. We've competed for the responsibilities and the challenges which that involves. The challenge for me now is to deliver. I will lead a united Labour Party in Wales. It will be a united Labour Party because the will is there. Had Rodri been the winner, I and my supporters would have backed him 100% with the generosity I hope that he has shown this morning. And some who told me that they'd vote with Rodri with what I can only describe as refreshing candour have also said, but if you win, you'll have my full support as leader. And the Wales Labour Party emerges from this contest healthier than ever. Of course our opponents have sought to deride and decry the process, but it involved the three elements of the party, the three elements of the Labour family, the individual members of the party, the trade unions and the elected representatives in an inclusive process from which we emerge with heads held high. I want to make two promises about style and about policies. Today's decision is announced in Cardiff Bay, within sight of the meeting place for the new assembly. But the assembly must not be just about decisions and debates in a building in Cardiff. It must be about every part of Wales and for people in every part of Wales. For be ben be bont. If you would be a leader, you must be a bridge. That message is as old as the Mabinogion, but it's as fresh and new as our assembly will be. My leadership, the Labour Party's leadership, as a team in the assembly, will be about bringing together people in every part of Wales. For too long, the image of Wales has been one of division. North versus south, rural versus urban, west versus east, the valleys versus the coast. We have so much to gain from our assembly if we work together. Unity in diversity across every part of Wales. Uniting assembly members with local government in Wales, with business, that's with employers and with trade unions, with the voluntary sector in each part of Wales. In the regional committees, in the subject committees, in the assembly itself, and in everything we do across Wales, we must work together in the atmosphere of partnership and cooperation, which is at the heart of the Labour Party's constitution, to create the dynamic devolution about which I spoke at the start of this campaign and about which I shall say more in the future. And we will deliver on our policies, our pledges made to the Welsh people before the general election in May 1997 and which we will renew and expand in the first Welsh general election on the 6th of May this year. The Assembly will win the confidence of the people of Wales, including the doubters and including those who voted against it, because it will deliver a better life for people in Wales. Our promises are clear. Success for Wales within the United Kingdom, within Europe, in a stable economy. An effective single health service in every area of Wales. Jobs and opportunity through education and training for our young people in every part of Wales safer communities in every part of Wales, and an assembly which works in the interests of everyone in Wales and every part of Wales. I entered national politics after working with unemployed young people here in Cardiff and seeing jobs and opportunity and hope stolen from them by the Thatcher government. I fought to bring economic success to Cardiff and to Wales, and around you here are the signs of a city on the move. With the Assembly, together, we will set Wales on the move, led by a United Wales Labour Party in that Assembly. Yn y cynulliad, gadyn ni unedi i sicrhau dyfodol Cymru, Cymru Cryf, Cymru Hyderus, 
Cymru Llwyddiannus, Cymru y Medra. I was born in Anglesey and I'm told that in the quarries of North Wales, the people of Unismorn were known as Pobble y Medra, the people who were quick to say, I can, in response to any challenge. We need to set aside the dark, despairing, Celtic side of our nature, the poetic pessimism which expects defeat, and instead make Wales the land of Pobble y Medra, because together we can. Having been born and brought up in North Wales, lived and worked in South Wales for over 30 years, and seeking to represent Mid and West Wales in the Assembly, I promise to be a bridge to unite Wales as leader. Let's unite the best of Labour's traditions from the past, our messages from the present in seeking to lead Wales for the future. United we stand, divided we fall. Together we can achieve far more than we achieve alone. Wales needs the united leadership which only the Wales Labour Party can offer. Let us prepare to offer that leadership. Together, let us lead Wales. Thank you. Well, there we have Alan Michael, the Welsh Secretary. His acceptance speech after learning that he had, in fact, as expected, been elected as leader uh, or prospective leader of the uh, Labour Party in the Welsh Assembly. But it was a very tight vote, as predicted. Uh, Alan Michael got just over 52%, or nearly 53%. His uh, opponent, Roger Morgan, got just uh, under 48%, 47.3%. Uh, but the thing that Roger Morgan emphasised was that when it came to those sections of the party which voted by ballot, he did very much better. Something like two-thirds of the ordinary party members preferred the losing candidate, and where the trade unions conducted a ballot of their member, as Mr. Morgan pointed out, there also he had a majority, as he said in his speech, I don't feel like a loser, uh, runner-up, yes, loser never. Mr. Michael, by contrast, setting out his shop for the uh, forthcoming assembly elections and stressing very much, perhaps not unexpectedly, the whole theme of unity. So there we are, that's the uh, election completed there. Now, uh, it being Saturday, let's take a break.